Welcome back, y'all. Welcome back, y'all. Welcome, biggity, biggity, biggity back, y'all. Hey, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hello, hello, hello. My name is Kelsey, your friendly neighborhood BSG expert. Uh. <laughs> if you are not new here, then hello again. Welcome back. Come on in, girl, guy, whoever. Grab a drink, sit on down. Even if you're new, come on in here. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day so far. If you do not know me, once again, my name is Kelsey and I have lost 115 to 120 pounds using my tool, the Gastric Sleep, also known as the BSG. It's my hope that through my videos you are able to find the answers to questions you've been looking for or the path to choosing surgical weight loss has made that much easier. Welcome back, you guys. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I feel like I've said that already, but I'm going to say it again. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And also, I hope you don't think I'm so extra that I would match my shirt to my light from my desk. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I am that extra. I am. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I swear. I really hope you're having a wonderful day. You guys, I am struggling so hard with keeping like my eyes on the camera and the camera alone. I'm so used to looking to my looking at myself and it's so hard to not look over there. But I'm going to do my best to look in the camera instead of looking at myself because you can definitely tell a difference and I don't want to annoy you guys, but it's so hard. It's so hard to break that, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I promise. I promise. I promise. Well, anyways, we're going to go ahead and get into the video today. So I did some research online. I also posted a couple questions on my social media sites asking actual, and when I say social media sites, I mean other bariatric groups that I'm in and just different forums that I'm a part of, um, asking actual bariatric patients their regrets on having VSG or bariatric surgery. Now, I know that this could be looked at as like a taboo thing. Like, why would you talk about things that you regret? Why would you think about, why would you talk about the negative? Well, everything isn't sugar, honey, and glitter. That's just not the realistic part, or that's just not realistic, period. So everything is going to have a negative and they're going to have positives. So I'm really big about balance. Um, and if you are someone who is looking into having weight loss surgery, you've had weight loss surgery recently, and you feel like you are overreacting about things or maybe you're feeling things that other people haven't felt. Um, I'm here to bring the truth to you. I also have added in some of my regrets or things that I regret about weight loss surgery. And they're not necessarily negative things. They're just things that I've had to adapt with and understand that that is a part of the lifestyle change. Um, so if you're not really into the real, the raw, and the uncut, this may not be the place for you because I'm going to give it to you that way. So let's go ahead and get into reason 10 as to why people say they regret having weight loss surgery. I'm going to rank these from 10 to 1. 10, they're, they're in no, no particular order, no order of severity. They're just on the list. However, they show up. <laughs> Number 10, I feel like it's the most common thing that I hear and it's also how I feel. A lot of people say they regret having weight loss surgery because they are no longer able to enjoy food. This is one of the psychological aspects that follow weight loss surgery. Um, your mind wants you to enjoy food so bad, but your stomach it's not happening. It's not happening. It is not with it. It's not showing up to the party. Um, and a lot of times that creates this really melancholy, sad, distraught feeling like I can no longer enjoy food. And in some cases, this idealism or these thoughts can hurt you long term. It can cause you to gain weight because you tend to snack on things or eat things that you're not supposed to because you feel like you deserve it. It's very important to be mindful of our addictions. If you kick an overeating addiction, if you kick a binge eating disorder, um, try your hardest to work through those cravings and those feelings because they are going to kick you back into weight gain mode and it's a slippery slope down. You guys know it's easy, easy, easy to put weight on and hard, hard, hard to get it off. And I feel like with my experience, I miss food so much. Um, I miss certain 
I miss certain foods so much and not necessarily because they were just so delicious, but because of how they made me feel. And so I find myself having nostalgic thoughts about food. And I know that's probably like to someone who doesn't have a food addiction, that's probably like, well, what the hell? Like you're daydreaming about food? Absolutely. Of course I have. Um, because food got me through some of the hardest parts of my life. Food was there, you know, through the struggle. Food was there through the good, the bad, up, the down. Um, but what I've had to realize is I can still enjoy good food. I can still eat good things, but they are just healthy and all food of all walks, you know, of course, food is food, food is food is good. Um, it's just knowing that allowing ourselves to eat a little bit of moderation here and there of foods that we once enjoyed, you know, it's okay. Um, but for me, I try my hardest to stay away from things that I'm not supposed to have because I, I have an addictive personality and I struggled with binge eating disorder. Um, so I have to be careful what I allow myself to eat. So my recommendation, you know, in my experience, having a registered dietitian and also um, a therapist, someone you could talk to about your feelings, about food, just missing that, that feeling and that comfort that food gave you, that's really important because it will help you in the long term. So once again, the number 10 reason that people say they regret having weight loss surgery is because they miss eating food. Another reason that people say they end up hating or regretting the fact that they had weight loss surgery is going to be number nine, and that is they regret not learning how to eat slowly before having weight loss surgery. And, you know, I'm not going to lie, eating the way that we have to eat as bariatric patients is really hard. Um, taking smaller bites, being more mindful of what we're eating, um, putting less in our mouth, really tasting and um working out the food in our mouth, chewing it 20 to 30 times to almost applesauce consistency, um, the embarrassment of going out to eat with, you know, friends and family and, you know, you're still working on your kid's meal and they've scarfed down four baskets of bread, their entrees, and now they're on to dessert and they're looking at you like, God, you know, it must suck to be you. But the realization of it is if you eat too fast, you're more than likely going to overeat. And with any type of bariatric surgery, that is a no-no really easy for certain foods to get stuck and for me I feel like chicken is the worst I don't care like y'all I could chew chicken 696 times especially a chicken breast a grilled chicken breast I'm gonna tell you something I could chew that sucker until my jaws lock up and it's still gonna give me issues going down um but I can say that compared to before my surgery I would just scarf food down and it was like I would still be hungry because I've just shoved a whole plate of food in my face and my stomach hasn't had the ability to, to catch up. And so I go and get seconds and thirds because my body hasn't caught up with all of the food that I've eaten. And the same thing can happen with your with your sleeve, with your new tummy. So it's recommended that the consistency that we chew our food to be like a mashed potato consistency. Um... Just imagine if you're feeding a baby, you're not going to give a baby a big hunk of dry chicken breast because they're not going to be able to swallow it. They're going to choke on it. Their little stomachs are going to hurt. So just keep chewing. Just keep chewing. Just keep chewing, chewing, chewing. What do we do? We chew, chew, chew. I feel like a kindergarten teacher, but no, really. Um, it's really important to chew. And I could see that being why people regret it. I don't have a problem with it. I don't like it. Um, but... I could see that being a reason. So regret number eight, and this is something that I'm dealing with right now. So um, I definitely resonate with this or this resonates with me. Excess skin after your weight loss surgery is hard to deal with. Somebody wanted to come and say hello to you guys. I say hello, beach. This is my girl. This is my sweet girl. I love her so much. She's such a good cat. Um, but she is a chunk. She has really put all the pounds that I've lost. She has definitely put on. Um, but access skin after weight loss surgery is really hard to manage. Um, for me, it's my stomach and I could have excess skin here. I could have excess skin on my thighs and anywhere else, but it's just like, it almost negates the fact that I've lost over 100 pounds, which is no easy feat, which is something that some people will never do in their lifetime. Um, 
but it, it in my mind, my body dysmorphic mind, it tells me that, you know, you're still 330 pounds. And I know that's, that's crazy, but that's just, that's just the truth of the matter. But, you know, one of the, you know, benefits to having weight loss surgery, it just, you know, prepares you to have weight loss or to have skin removal surgery. <laughs> um, I get that, I, you know, I get at that question asked to me a lot because I know a lot of people can tell, like, you know, she's smaller up here. You know, you can, you can see a little bit of my collarbone, not too much, but if I do this, you can. Um, I get the question a lot, like, you know, are you going to have skin removal surgery? Are you going to get a tummy tuck? Um, it really just depends on how the next year goes. Um, if I'm able to get under 200 pounds, which has been, you know, just a, a personal goal of mine, it's not necessarily my doctor's preferred weight for me. Um, but if I'm able to get under, under 200 pounds, yes, I will consider having loose skin surgery. Um, so I want to actually show you guys what my stomach looks like right now. Um, I'm really scared. Let's just be honest. Um, because this is me being fully vulnerable. This is me being fully exposed. And once you put something on the internet, you can never take it off. So you guys be really kind to me, please. All right, you guys, I'm in standing mode now. So as you can see, you know, she is here. She is great. So a lot of the clothing that I wear, if you notice, if you follow me on social media, a lot of my clothing comes up here because um, it cinches here and it kind of like... I wouldn't say flares out, but it, it makes it a little easier, um, to conceal my stomach. So, um, these are my scars. I get a lot of questions about how my scars have healed. Um, so yeah, we're going on down. So this is the culprit. So, um, as you can see here, it's just flappy. Um, it's more so flat now. Um, and I can lift my stomach up yeah so like I said be kind to me like all of this is just like um but I do feel if I lose about 30 more pounds um the skin will become less than what it is Ooh, child the things I do for social media um <laughs> please be kind to me um but yes I could I'm definitely, um, there are days where, um, I get so frustrated because I don't look like I've lost 150, I'm sorry, 115 pounds, 120 pounds, um, because of my stomach, you know, everywhere else I'm pretty small. I'm a petite girl. Um, I am 5'3", without heels, um, on a good day, I am, I am 5'3", um, but my stomach it just it really plays a toll on me or takes a toll on me so I could completely understand somebody saying hey like I regret it like I regret having the surgery because I just don't look the way I thought I was gonna look and I get it um but that's definitely mind over matter um I'd rather take this floppy stomach of mine um and look better in my clothes and be more mobile not hurt as much I'm looking directly at myself again look over y'all can see um and just doing more in my life, being, you know, unafraid to fly on an airplane, just really being unapologetically me. I would take that any day um, over being 330 pounds. Regret number seven that most people say that they have, um, it kind of goes hand in hand with what I just spoke about. Um, and that's body dysmorphia and not being ready for not being able to accept the fact that you've lost weight <laughs> and not being able to really like be happy about the weight that you've lost because you can't see it still having your you know as I call it your fat brain on um and and that's a real thing because I go through it I still find myself buying three and four x clothing just depending on you know where I'm buying it from and I end up having to return it um things are just too big um, because even with my stomach I'm I'm in a one to two X just depending um, and that's because of my stomach I'm, I'm convinced that if I had my stomach removed it would be about 30 to 40 pounds um, gone I'm convinced I know it um, but yeah so a lot of us you know we lose a substantial amount of weight and it takes 
you know, our brain a while to catch up with that. Body dysmorphia is technically defined as, you know, obsessing about small minor flaws and details about our bodies opposed to seeing the true and clear picture of the way that we really look. For me, it's going to be my stomach. I have focused so much on my stomach after my surgery um, and the weight that I've lost that it has become um, almost an obsession for lack of better words. In a lot of cases, you know, people say that they would have waited to have, you know, surgery until they, you know, had the coping skills and the coping mechanisms to be able to deal with body dysmorphia and the waves and the throws and the blows that it gives you. But I'm a firm believer that even if you, you know, read and you go to therapy and you talk to people and you sit down and you're told like, hey, your body's, you know, you're going to lose weight, but you're still going to think you're fat or you're still going to think you're overweight. Um, I don't think that that would change. I think that um, we can prepare as much as we want to, but we'll never truly be ready for what our mind does. We can't control our mind. Like we can control a lot of things um, to a certain extent, um, but we cannot control what thoughts our mind produces. Isn't that crazy? We can pretty much control everything, you know, for the most part with ourselves, but our mind can't control it. So the downside of it, you may see the same person that you were before you had your surgery for a year to two years after your surgery. And this can cause you to feel stressed, tense, um, like you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, but rest assured it gets better. Um, and once you are able to see your progress, you become a more happy and more confident person in who you are. So don't let that deter you and don't let that make you feel like you failed or that you shouldn't have had your, your sleeve or your your um, bypass or whatever procedure you had. My country accent just wants to come out so bad. So, so, so bad. Um, <laughs> um, don't allow that to stop you from moving through your post-op life happily and healthy, knowing that you made the change that is changing your life that is reinventing who you are so the next one is a big one and um i, I touched on this a little bit in my um to your post-op update a lot of people regret and including myself regret having bariatric surgery due to hair loss and i'm gonna tell you guys it's unavoidable it's unavoidable no surgery that you have no procedure that you have that is weight loss related is going to stop you from the weight loss, I mean, from the hair loss demon. Of course, you're not going to be stopped from the weight loss demon because everybody loses some weight around here. But um, I thought in the beginning, I would say in the first year, I lost a little bit of hair. Um, it wasn't too bad. And I was, you know, but it was it was substantial enough for me to be like, okay, you know, double down on this and make sure you're getting this and da, 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 da. And it, it, it rang an alarm. So, um, you know, and I went a good year, year and a half, like, you know, my hair seemed like it had become healthy again. It was buoyant. It was full of life. Um, and then I had a little spat where I just kind of stopped taking my, my supplements for a few months all on me, you know, just being irresponsible and impulsive, um, and fighting some demons that I had just in regards to my, my weight loss and just all of that. But, um, I would say that here in the past four to five months, I have seen the worst hair loss that I've seen the entire life of my post-op surgery era. Um, and, and it was like, there was nothing I could do to stop it. It was all my fault. Um, but it just showed me how important vitamins were. It showed me how important protein is. Um, and being proactive and getting my collagen in, upping my biotin, just being respectful to my body and, you know, understanding that vitamins are are crucial, you know, to just, just, just your, your advancement throughout life. Like I'm in the maintenance stage pretty much now. And it's, it's super important. It's, it's important. Typically, you know, you'll see the most hair loss in between three to six months after your surgery. It can last up to 12 to 24 months. It really just depends on how your body is leveling out. Clearly, mine decided it was going to go, you know, 24 months out. And they'll be like, you know what? No hair for you. But as I mentioned in my other video, um, I would take being bald over being 330 pounds. I'm just going to, I mean, I think I could rock it, you know? I think I'd be okay. You know, I have a smaller face now, so I 
feel like I would be okay. Um, yeah, but it's normal. It's going to happen. And another, just don't let it deter you from, from knowing that you made the best decision for yourself. So my tips for minimizing, you know, minimizing your hair loss, because you can't, you're not going to stop it. Get at least 60 grams of protein a day. Make sure you take your vitamins and add in some zinc. I know that, um, you know, we get, we, we take a lot of vitamins and all of our supplements, but make sure it has zinc in it and biotin, of course, um, and eat seafood, you know, maybe a few shrimps or whatever here or there. Um, it's really good for your hair and it's really good with, for building those bonds back. So if you're struggling with hair loss, it'll get better. Don't let it deter you or make you feel like you made the wrong decision or that you need to regret it. <laughs> the next reason, number five, is going to be people in, and myself um, did not understand how much their relationship with food was going to change. Understanding that, you know, things were not going to be the same. Understanding that, you know, the way you felt about food before is not the same way you're going to feel about food after your surgery. Um, and I think that a lot of people think that, you know, it's going to be the same. It's not going to be the same. There's going to be food that you loved before that's going to be disgusting now. I think the easiest one for me to go to is going to be like a little Debbie cake. I loved a good zebra cake. I tried one and I almost hurled. It was horrible. I would never do it again. But I'm just saying like, you know, your relationship with food is changing or will change and will continue to change. Say that, you know, eating now feels like a chore because there's so much effort you have to put into it. But don't look at it like that. You know, look at it as your body is a machine and why just like if you have like a mercedes and you know people won't you know use unleaded gas just regular old 87 in their car um they only use premium or whatever gas think of it like that why would you want to put anything in your body that is not good for it you want to run and and be out in the races forever so don't think of it as a chore don't think of it as you know Oh, I could never, you know, eat a plate of Rotel with some Smokies. You know, I just can't live my life. I can't eat, you know, da, da, da. What's more important? Living until you're 9,000 and having the ability to go hiking and ride on an airplane and, and, you know, wear cute clothes and feel good about yourself or, you know, having the ability to eat whatever you want to eat and be over, be extremely overweight because I'm still overweight, but I'm just saying, which... On the scale of what is more important, which one weighs more to you? Number four is going to be not having realistic expectations. Um, I fall into this category as well. Um, I'm not going to lie. When I first, you know, decided to have gastric sleeve surgery and I went in and um, I was doing all of my, you know, my, my pre- authorization stuff, my pre-op diet, talking to the surgeon, talking to the nutritionist, all I could think about was me coming out and just having this banging body, um, losing all this weight, feeling good, you know, wearing what I wanted to wear and doing what I wanted to do because could nobody stop me. Um, and so after I have the surgery, I lose 100 pounds and I'm still walking around here, you know, with, with a belly. It was frustrating um, because I'm like, the surgery didn't do what it was supposed to do, but it did. It did do what it was supposed to do. I did lose weight. I am healthier. I am in a better place. Um, but there's still more work to be done. It's just a tool. It is just the it's basically like somebody holding a couple doors open for you, for you to walk easily through. But then there's a couple flights of steps you got to go up. They can't carry you up those stairs. You got to carry yourself. So I'm at the point now where I'm carrying myself upstairs and I've got to get the stomach down. Um, but I won't lie to you and tell you that. I felt like my results were the best because I didn't. And I can't lie to you guys and tell you, you know, that I was always happy because unfortunately the way that my body is set up um, with the PCOS and all of the other health um, issues I had prior and still now, um, my weight gathers in my midsection. Um, and with weight loss surgery, without weight loss surgery, that's going to be the hardest place for you to lose weight really at all. So, um, but that doesn't mean that I regret my surgery. I, I, I just, I'm so thankful for my surgery. I'm so thankful for the, um, for the new leash on life I gave myself, um, for the new path that I'm creating. Um, if everything went to plan, if everything worked out the way it was supposed to, um, we would not have character. We would not have the ability to, um, we would be different people. We'd all be the same because we'd have no challenges in life. So, uh, yeah.
not where I want to be, but I'm definitely headed there. So the next thing that people regret is that it's a lot of work. You know, I knew that, you know, I knew that it was going to be a lot of work. Um, I don't think I knew how much mentally it was going to be. Um, you know, I understood that I was going to, you know, if I, I would have to go to the gym or do whatever to, to get to where I needed to be. Um, and there'd be meal prepping and there'd be different eating. I didn't understand how much weightlifting I'd be doing up here. And I think a lot of people think it's going to be a walk in the park. They think it's going to be a, you know, just an easy, a easy sailing day, just a, you know, walking out and, and, and enjoying the sunshine, skipping and picking daffodils and the weight as you're picking daffodils, your pounds are just falling off. Um, no, it's a lot of work. It is a, it's, and, and sometimes it is a, an eye opener for people who believe that it's easy. And there are some people who believed it was an easy way out, an easy out, um, an easy way to lose weight. And unfortunately it's not. Um, the easy part is getting the surgery. It's living your life after and maintaining your weight loss and continuing to live healthy and continuing to understand that, you know, yes, your restriction will still be there, but you can eat whatever you want. And if you want to sit around and eat a bag of potato chips, uh, nine times out of ten, you probably can. Might, might not make you feel good, but, you know, that takes work. That takes dedication. That takes being steadfast. That takes being um, consistent. And a lot of people just didn't want to do that. Number two on the regrets list that make people not want to have it or make, make people regret having their surgery is not being able to interact and go out with their friends the way they used to. I guess their social life changes and it does. It does. Um, I think I've mentioned before it's either if I go out on a friend date it's either I'm going to eat or I'm going to drink. I can't do both um, because you guys know 30 before 30 after and I, I am steadfast with that. I have not changed that. I do not drink before my meal 30 minutes and I don't drink 30 minutes after um, and a lot of times going out to eat you can't do both so i you know and in social settings it's always you know the thing you go out with your girls you're going to get drinks you're going to get food you're going to you know talk you're going to laugh um and then people are always asking you weird questions like are you okay because you've eaten so little or you take two bites of your meal and you're like oh i'll take a pickle box please and you know people are always like what's wrong with her especially people who don't know you know if you're not openly you know telling people you know that you've had bariatric surgery they always assume the worst like you're doing drugs or you're just depressed or you just don't want to eat or the food is nasty and i think the worst feeling is going to someone's house or going to a restaurant and the person's like did you not like your food you know you didn't eat much and you're like no it was delicious i'm just really full and either they believe you or they're offended and that's an awkward situation to be in but a lot of people regret having, you know, because a lot of people are very social creatures. Me, I'm I'm a social person, but I have a very small circle and everybody knows, you know, my, my situation. But um, a lot of people are very social people and, you know, they, a lot of their personality, a lot of who they are, you know, life is about people and um, not being able, able to interact with them, you know, via food, which is a big thing in the South, really affects people. Um, but once again, I just have to say, you know, remember that this is a lifestyle change. This is, you know, it's for life. Um, and so those people who are in your social circles, they've got to understand, you know, and you've got to understand that if you want to be healthy and if you want to get to where you want to go, you've got to make some changes and that's okay. You know, don't regret it. Just get over it. <laughs> that's bad advice. <laughs> um, and the number one regret on the regrets for weight loss surgery gastric sleeve list is going to be not doing it sooner and i think that i, I say this you know anytime i'm doing like a a q a or an update or or whatever i regret not having my surgery sooner and that is it doesn't make me regret having my surgery it makes me regret not doing it sooner because i feel like i missed out on so much life there's so much that I could have been doing that I wasn't doing because I was still overweight and I was scared to have the surgery and I was scared to go under the knife. And I, you know, I heard all these horror stories about people dying and, you know, people not being healthy after their, after their weight loss surgery. And a lot of times it's due to, you know, human error, you know, not taking your supplements, not getting your protein in, not getting your hydration in. Um, the first three months after your surgery is crucial and you have to follow your surgeon's strict orders. 
because if not, it can affect you. Um, but I definitely regret not having my surgery sooner. But I have it and I would do it. I would do it every day. I would have the surgery over and over and over again if I could and twice on Sunday. Um, the, uh, the new life that my surgery has given me, um, I can't compare that to any anything in this world. There's nothing that, you know, it's worth its weight in gold, platinum, diamonds, you know, like really. Um, if I could bottle up how happy and how good I feel now um, and sell it to people, people would like really really enjoy the feeling <laughs> anyways i hope you guys enjoyed this video it was a little bit lengthy um but i do think that it's important that i go into a little bit of detail about the reasons that people would regret or do regret and also that i regret um my gastric sleeve surgery like i said it's good to talk about the positive and the negative because not everything is just always sunshine skittles and rainbows you know you know I love you guys to the moon and back. If you would like to and you have not, please hit that subscribe button. Become a member of my family. I would love to have you here. Also, if you head on over to Facebook.com and check out my support group, One Bite at a Time, it's a place tape. Place tape. It's a safe place to talk about hard things. Not just weight loss surgery related, but everything. We talk about everything in there. Like, really, I see some of everything. <laughs> We're all talking about something. Um, and sometimes you just need somebody to listen to you. Somebody just to like your post. Somebody just to validate how you're feeling. And that is okay. I love you guys. To the moon and back. You could have been anywhere else in this world. But you chose to be here with me. I will see you later, Gatos. Peace out. <laughs>